Hey guys, Stunts the Boss here, and this is a deck profile of my deck that I top aided the Columbus KMC in Ohio um, yesterday, the 29th of March, with. It was a light water fire tempo deck of some description that a lot of the times could transition into Rush if I needed it to, and if I hit the right progression. Um, did a whole lot of work for me, and there's definitely a lot of things that, in retrospect, that would change, but obviously performed pretty well. So, let's get into it. Three Magris, it's fast, it's cheap, um, it's cheap BBP bait, and it, what can I say, it's not, uh, it's not Blaze Belcher, and it's not a blocker, so I can swing with it. Um, three Metal Max, it gives me the red mana that I really need a lot of the time. It's got a strong body, beats over a lot of the Cyber Lords, um, and it's an Enforcer. To be Cyber Scamp because Cyber Scamp, it's tempo, I like getting free cards and swinging. Two Luminous Shield Wing. This thing has been really putting in kind of random amounts of works. I wouldn't go up to three on it, but I think with the power being just right so at 15, so it could beat over Scamps and it could beat over random things, um... And then also being able to smash into tap things and just get yourself a free shield so there's no risk of getting Neurond, who's unblockable, when you're out of shields. I think that's really valuable. And then on top of that, also being obviously Enforcer Bait for Blinder Beat Prime. Um, two Aqua Strider. This I probably want to go back up to three on. I was between two and three for a long time. I wasn't sure if I wanted the blockers, but. And then versus my multi sieve count. And. It really does put in so much work, so much more than Kraken. Um, yeah. Three Seneschal, because I like to draw things. It's Good card is good. Three Plasma Pincer. Uh, pure, yeah, Pincer. This thing, people don't know how to play around it. My number one concern when I chose to play it this weekend was Waylay's a thing. So, but with that said, I looked at a lot of the control decks on um, TKC's website, and... I noticed that, like, one of the major control decks that all topped, like, very few of them, obviously not exactly one, um, they were the only ones that played Waylay. The rest of them didn't play things like Suffocate or Tendril Grass, but those don't come into play until late game unless, obviously, there's a Shield Blast, but at that point, the argument's irrelevant because Blasts are Blasts. Um, and I, I figured, okay, if I'm going to be afraid of board wipes like that, then I might as well just not play anything 3 or below or 2,000 or below at that point, so, um, that was part of my rationale for playing this over Dawnblaze Patrol. Um, I wouldn't go down to 2, actually, I think 3 is a great number for this card, because, um, the main part is its ability Skitter there. It, um, at the end of each of your turns, untap this creature, puts in so much work, because people don't know how to deal with it. That's why it's basically a 3 for 5k. It's kind of the deck's uh, Dawnblaze or Lost Patrol or Swordhorn or whatever you want to call it. But the thing is, this doesn't leave itself vulnerable afterwards. So that's where it gets a lot of it, a lot of its value. You can just swing Justified over a lot of Aqua Striders and things like that. Swing in a shield, and if they block, they lose their blocker. And if they don't block, then you get the free shield and he's not vulnerable next turn unless your opponent has to wait to tap spell on a level 3, not even Enforcer. So, that's fun. Two Piercing Judgment. Um, I went down to two for the multi sieve count because I had a lot of four drops, and I think turn four was getting clunky as it was. Um, three Aqua Chaser because it's freaking amazing. Two Psychic Predator because it's amazing, and I don't have three anyway. Even if I did, I don't think I'd go up to three. Um, it put in work, but it was always number one target on my opponent's hit list, so it never stayed on the field very long unless you put in a lot of work to protect it. And at that point, there was kind of inefficient use of resources. I could have just protected something like, I don't know, a Finbar or a Brand of Evil Prime and just gone in. Um, two laws. I was debating between two and three laws on this point, but the deck is already pretty big. It's 46 cards total, and obviously I had a problem with consistency during the day. So there you go. Um, it's most because I'm indecisive. The Keeper of Laws... I expected a lot more control than there was, and while there was a lot of control at the top table, there were still like 25, 30 tempo decks, like uh, like Mark Wooden said in his deck profile. Um, yeah, it, it didn't put in a lot of work except for insurance against blasts, really. 
Um, I think two is a good number, at least at this stage in the meta. If control gets a lot bigger, then maybe go up to three, but I don't know. Uh, two Gila Flames. The reason I played Gila Flame instead of Blitzer Mech is because I saw that there would be a ton of, um, or I expected there to be a ton of Cyber Lords, which I correctly called. And um, this guy trades with Neuron. He also doesn't leave himself vulnerable like Blitzer Mech. And while Blitzer Mech's uh, tap ability is amazing, a lot of the times I'm not, I'm either beating over a lot of the uh, creatures who I would have been rushing past anyways with Gila Flame not leaving himself vulnerable. And Blitzer Mech just didn't do it for me, and then obviously the multi sieve count was giving me problems as well. Um, three Bounded Real Prime because it's good, it's a finisher, it taps things down, it's just as controlly as it is rushy um, if you're in a bad position. And if you're playing against maybe, I don't know, Mono White Ratchup or something like that. Two Major Ow. Um, I talked with Ricky Gross a lot about this deck because I don't have locals and he does, and he basically tested it for me in a different form. Uh, Shouts out to Ricky. Um, he said he only wanted he only wanted uh, BVP as the only five drop, and while I can see his reasoning behind that, I think that's really a smart idea. I think Major Ow is just too good right now in such a tempo dominated meta to not run two of. I won't go up to three, but the two of to just drop him, beat over an attacker, and then either put him back into blocking position or hit a shield or something at that point is just too good. Um. Yeah, the Neptus, I probably cut. I ran that just because I didn't want the laws to get beat over by random stuff, and this would, and this also trades with um, neurons. But neurons really aren't that like. I never, I never played Neptus. I don't think I played it once today. Probably not a good call. I would cut that. Um, one Lyra. I was actually pretty happy with the one Lyra because it, it. I didn't get to turn six a lot of the times, and by the time I was in turn six, unless I'm drawing super huge off of Finbar. I was probably in top deck mode, so turn six was kind of for me. I don't know. Um, Stormspark Blast, I like to win, so I play this card. Finbar, best dragon. Um, not a dragon. You just play Finbar in tempo. If you don't, you're probably losing. Um, two Blaze Helix. Some people wanted to play one. I know Mark Wooden was playing one, and he ended up and he had the ability to search it out of a sixty card Behemoth deck. Um, I played two just because I really like the card, and I think with my issues and consistency and my lack of red in this deck, um, I wanted to have the extra ability to draw red. I know a lot of people say, oh, you can just play Stormspark and it does the job better, but I like to be able to kill the blockers outright, so I, so if my they hit a blast or something and I don't finish them that turn, then I'm still, then the blockers can't revenge me. Um... With that said, however, I only did use the destruction ability the entire day. I'd never used the overcharge ability. Um, one Cobalt. I would actually debate going up to two on this thing, because he is he put in so much work. He stabilized me against um, Cyberlord matchup and a lot of the rush matchups so many times because he beats over Dendrite, which this deck has made problem with, and he gets you that extra shield. So if you're on tilt, basically, with no shields, and you're living in constant fear of the Neuron, who's unblockable... This guy stabilizes you so well, um, especially with his ability to beat over Neuron. Yeah, so like I said, I'd almost consider going up to two. And then the last card, this is my hot tech of the day, and I'd probably cut it. Spellbane. Um, like I say, I expected a lot more control than there was, so I figure, okay, if I'm going to be swinging in and there's going to be just Blast City in the shields and there's a chance of Andromeda, I think this guy would help me get me there sooner. And I didn't play him once today, not because I didn't get up to the mana. I got up to 7 mana pretty consistently. But I just didn't get a chance to play him, and when I did, he wouldn't have been any good because it was an aggro matchup, and there wasn't more than one Blast and Shields maximum anyway. Um, so yeah, that's the deck. If I didn't say it before, it's 46 cards. Man, that's fuzzy as living heck. There we are. Um, I really like it. I want to tweak it. I want to try it out a little bit more. Um, I don't know if I'll be playing it at my last KMC of the season at Pink Bunny Games in Milwaukee, but putting a lot of work. Um, as for cuts, I'd probably, like I said before, I'll cut one of those, cut that, and what was the other thing I was going to do? Dang, I forgot it. And I'll probably cut one Blaze Helix, maybe go up to a second Cobalt. That'll put me up to 44, which still isn't great, but... Consistency. Oh, and I'd go up to another Aqua Strider, so I, I still got numbers to play with here.
So, yeah. Thanks a lot. Um, subscribe to DK Judo channel. Shouts out to Mark Wooden and Ignorant Radical, who I met there. Um, Shouts out to the guys at Gamers Gauntlet, who I've been chilling with basically this entire KMC season. And, uh, yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye.